Welcome, everyone. Whoops, let's go live properly here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. It's Friday, TGIF. It's Friday's inspiration today. And uh, today we're talking about love. Love and why it's so hard to find it. Now, love is what, in my opinion, it's kryptonite. It is kryptonite to all of the dark energies on the planet. And this is what we need on the planet more now than ever. And as this herd of humanity, global consciousness is moving in this new direction, momentum is gaining, momentum is growing. And so we are, um, you know, it's like when a herd is grazing out in the Serengeti and at some point, you know, they decide that they're going to go get water. And when it reaches that 51%, the herd slowly starts to move in the direction of water. There's just this unconscious communication that goes throughout the whole herd. And what happens is that once the herd starts moving, there's no going back, right? There's no going back. Thanks everyone for showing up today. It's good to see you here. Um, so there's no going back once the herd starts moving and the herd, we have reached that 51%, hey Z. We've reached that 51% and more. Uh, I think it's closer to about um, 50, about 85%. So we are well on our way and everything that can't sustain this direction is gonna fall away. And that's why we see so much chaos. And we've, you know, some of us are disappointed about the way things are turning out um, with the election and with where, just everything on the planet. But I can assure you that uh, things are, there's things that are working out on our behalf that we have no idea about. Things that are watching our back and uh, are working in our favor, not against us. And so one of the things that um, I wanted to address today was how love is this overriding energy, this overriding influence that can counterbalance these darker energies on the planet. Love is kryptonite for them because they are at the opposite end of the spectrum. They thrive on our anger, on our fear, on our worry, anxiety. And so as long as they can keep stirring up the pot with all of that, then this is how they feed themselves energetically. So we want to be able to counterbalance this with the opposite energies. And so there's a lot of degrees of love. I know Hawkins, Dr. David Hawkins, who created the um, Hawkins scale, he put love at 500. But I've discovered since having broken through his scale in 2012, and now this new infinity scale goes to infinity, that that 500 is like a base kind of love. It's, you know, like, um, I love chocolate. <laughs> but we now have access to a much higher vibrational, unconditional love. And this is in those higher vibrations. And so one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to do a, a major uh, meta-clearing. And we're going to find all those places where you're not allowing love into your life, into your hearts, so that that can extend out into the world. We all need this love. <clears throat> I wanted to read something out of my, um, out of my new book, uh, Access Your Ultimate Power, The Blueprint to Infinite Intelligence. And I wanted to um, share with you what I talk about in this book about uh, this paradigm of love, because everyone is sort of stuck or moving out of this old paradigm of how love operates. So I just wanted to read um, a few paragraphs and uh, just so that you can see what we're talking about. I couldn't find my other glasses. They don't match. <laughs> so it says, um, this is on page 68. In case you have your book, you can follow along. It says the old paradigm is of love is that it's something on the outside of us that we go out and get. We've been programmed to think 
Love is separate from us. We have to go out and find someone to love us in order to experience love. We want someone on the outside to fill the emptiness and the lack we feel inside. Some people spend a lifetime feeling lonely or lost chasing after love. For example, a young child can experience the separation when a parent threatens to withdraw or actually withdraws their love as punishment. This is often where this programming begins. And as an adult, we may suffer from separation anxiety or abandonment issues. The new paradigm realizes the love we experience on the outside is the result of what we self-produce on the inside. What we experience in the outer world is the reflection of this inner landscape. If we're not experiencing love in our outer world, it means there is work to do on the inside first. Love is self-generated. Once we know this truth, we become more accountable for what we create rather than blaming others if love is not present. As we do the work of removing what keeps our hearts small, we will begin to be kinder to ourselves and appreciate how far we've come as a result of doing our work. Instead of coming from a place of false ego, we will see the true nature of ourselves as brilliant, capable, highly intelligent. And so this is the reason that so many people are, are struggling, at least this is one of the reasons that so many people are struggling to find love is they're stuck in this old paradigm. But there's some other reasons too. There's other reasons such as we have uh, carried over from lifetimes of unresolved energies. It could be unresolved lifetimes with certain people. And then this lifetime, we meet those people again, ready to work those issues out. Uh, this is all happening subconsciously that people haven't even known about. But what if you could shine a light on that? What if you could do it more consciously? Like when you get into a new relationship, if you could find out how many lifetimes you've had with this person, how many lifetimes are still unresolved so that you can clear those energies so you don't have to go over all of that stuff again, spending a whole nother lifetime spinning in circles. Hey, Roma and Bobby, great to have you here. So this is another big reason why love is absent on the planet. Um, there's a few other influences, you know, the, the influence of this 1% energy and reptilian energies that are this overriding oppressive influence on the planet that shows up in, in many different ways. So one way is they broadcast their energetic frequencies of the, of the programs that they want us to believe. So one is the free range slavery program where they want everyone to just be working really hard, trying to prove their worth and value, but it's never enough, right? Because of this program that's been implanted. So that's one of the uh, things that, that needs to be cleared is, is this program where we are always trying to prove our worth and value. And it's actually a hamster wheel because we're trying to prove something that's already true, but we don't know it because of all this garbage, all this debris, all this programming that's on top of our radiance and our, our brilliance and this unconditional love we can have for ourselves. Now, if you think about having unconditional love for yourself right now, there might be a little inkling of something that says, well, that's not true. <laughs> you're not very lovable or, you know, you haven't done enough to prove you're lovable. Or remember when that person berated you so hard and it still sticks and you kind of still feel unlovable because that person just beat you down so hard emotionally. So all of those kinds of energies can still be weighing us down. And uh, Roma says, this is uh, so true. Um, let's see. Uh, and beautiful read from your amazing book. Infinite love is all there is. We just got to let go of those false beliefs that are the opposite of truth. 
Exactly. This is exactly true. And so the good news, the best news, is that it's all achievable. It's all achievable, achievable to us to not only find the programs that prevent us from accessing our heart where we can self-generate love and we don't have to rely on and keep hunting and looking for people to love us so that we feel loved, we self-generate the love. And then the outer world reflects that back to us. So if you've never experienced this kind of love that I'm talking about, there, there, there's some people who have never even felt even an inkling of the kind of love that I'm talking about. It's a kind of love that um, it, it's far beyond I love chocolate. <laughs> and, and maybe you fell, fell in love before, but that could have been more like limerence, where, which is just an... You know, it's a, uh, a feeling of infatuation. And so that's sort of the beginning of that feeling. There, there's a, a deep, deep kind of unconditional love that when we feel it, it washes over us with such an incredible wave and intensity that often we will just break down in tears because it, it feels so big. It feels so much. And so this is the kind of love that initially will break you up, break you wide open, and tears may just flow. And they're actually happy tears that you can actually feel that kind of depth of love that's available and accessible. And uh, so this is what we're gonna work on clearing today. And one of the things I wanted to mention before we uh, get started on this is that we are, because I, I'm just listening to spirit, spirit just directs me. <laughs> and because love is so needed on the planet right now to counteract these darker influences, that spirit has guided me and directed me to do our, uh, my next daily meta clearing. So I do a daily meta clearing. In fact, today was our last day of this last session, which was just amazing, right? Thank you, <laughs> yes. Um, I'll read that in just a second. So today was uh, the last day of the um, of our current one. So we've done this like four times now. This next time will be the fifth time. And so every time it's kind of like building on the next. In fact, every day that we do this daily meta clearing for 22 minutes will be this next round that it builds on the next. It builds on each one from the day before. And in this next one, it, the theme is, um, the theme is love. <laughs> I can remember the exact t title. Um, it's love. It's a, a love adventure. <laughs> it's a love adventure. And maybe Roma, you could remind me of what it's even called. Um, but what it's designed to do is it's designed to clear all the energies that are leading us up to Valentine's Day. Now, isn't that one of the most triggering kind of days that reminds us that maybe we don't have love in our life and how much we want a partner or how much the partner that we're with is just, you know, we're settling for less and it's there's maybe something better that's available that, you know, it's our birthright to be happy and to experience all this joyful love. And uh, so this Next round is going to be for 27 days, which is the number nine. So it's all about beginnings and endings. And Spirit has uh, guided the, the dates on this, which are incredible because they all relate to the number one, which has to do with how our thoughts create our reality. And the number two on how the seeds we are planting are beginning to grow. So we're gonna be planting seeds over 27 days on a daily basis, except Sunday is an integration day. And this is all leading to this Valentine convergence, which, um, no, this Valentine reconfiguration, where we're going to reset the energy on what Valentine's means for us. Now, I know for myself, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. And we were not even allowed to celebrate Valentine's Day. It was like a, they made everything pagan, everything wrong. And so every year, you know, I would 
come into the room on Valentine's Day and everybody had one of those bags on their, their desk and, and everybody had, there was just packed full of Valentines and everybody's bag was packed with Valentines and mine had maybe a couple because somebody felt sorry for me because I couldn't celebrate this holiday. And so I have a lot of triggers even for myself around this holiday. And so it's, um, it's gonna be really great for whatever issues you have around this holiday is that we can reconfigure how it's gonna affect us. We can reprogram um, this day so that it doesn't mean any of that stuff. It can just be a day where we have spent 27 days planting seeds so we can actually manifest something different in our life. More love, more joy, more um, cohesion and coherence in our, our relationships. So um, let's see what, <laughs> what Roma has to say here. Uh, yes, um, the moment we realize we are not a person, but we are experiencing a person, wow, it is much easier to let go and understand that simple yet hidden truth. Very, very true. Nice, nicely said, Roma. Um, so it's the 27-day Infinite Love Adventure Challenge. That's what the title was. <laughs> so we're going to be experiencing infinite possibilities with love. I hope you'll be joining us. So the three sections, I just wanted to share this last part. Uh, the first section, we're going to be clearing for uh, nine days. The second nine-day section, we are um, going to be um, planting seeds. And then the third nine-day section, we are going to be um, working on manifesting what we've been planting. So the dates starts on 111 to 121. The second section is from 122 to 21. And the third section is from 22 to 211. So I didn't figure that out on my own. Spirit totally directed that. <laughs> and so I know this is really going to be a very powerful, powerful um, month where we're going to be planting those seeds. But let's get a little taste of what could be in store for you as we spend some time today. I have no idea what I'm going to be looking at. I always like to just do things in the present moment and see what's showing up for, for those of you who are here and those of you who will be listening to this out into the future as a recording. So let's see. Um, we're going to first, we're gonna get grounded. And so the focus is all about love. What's in the way of you really manifesting love? We're gonna spend about uh, 25 minutes just clearing everything that's related to this. So first you wanna make sure that you have a really good grounding cord and you're gonna use your free imagination for all of this. So just imagine that line of energy that goes from the base of your spine and we're gonna go all the way, let's see, I think you're not live streaming on YouTube. Um, it says it was and Z is, is here. You still hear Z? <laughs> um, how long have I worked with Moss? I think I've worked with Moss for about five years now. I've, I've done, so Moss, um, Peter's asking about, about Moss. This is my mentor uh, who had a couple near-death experiences. And so, yes, I've been working with him for about um, five years. I've taken his advanced um, healing programs and, um, yeah, so... Okay, so maybe I'm not live streaming on, on YouTube anymore. If, it, if I am, great, and if I'm not, then oh well. <laughs> what can I do? I see myself there. Anyway, um, so let's get back to grounding. First, we're gonna put down that grounding cord. And then I want you to imagine roots going down from your feet deep into the earth. This is how you get ultra grounded. And then you bring that earth energy up through your legs and then down your grounding. Let's see if you have a worry circle. You do. Out to the third layer. So uh, let's pull in this third layer of this worry circle. 
which is where you're holding all of the worry, stress, anxiety, doubts, fear, uncertainty around love. And so next we're going to go far above our head. And this whole process that I'm walking you through is in my book. And uh, this is the process called running your energy. So we're gonna bring pure source down through your creative rings now into your crown. Seven, six, five. And it's stopping right at the heart, of course. So this is where we hold so much of those self judgments that prevent us from really loving ourselves. And they're not our judgments. They've been programmed by the people who showed up long before us, our parents, our, uh, could be in school, teachers. It could be our first love that was a bad experience. So um, at the heart, in this case, we're gonna go all the way out to the 15th layer. So this is, okay, sorry about the interference. Someone was trying to call there. Um, so this is where the, okay, I think we're back. Give me a thumbs up if we're back, <laughs> okay. Someone was trying to call and it disconnected a, a bit there. So um, in, in the heart, we're going to pull in this energy uh, that is the 1% influencing and interfering with the energy of our heart. This is where our infinite intelligence lies. This is where our ability to self-generate love is. And so as we're pulling out this 1%, it pulls into the second layer where there's a lot of anger. And so this is what the 1% uses because they live on anger, right? And the anger is the opposite of love. So as long as we're angry at ourselves and judging ourselves, we're not gonna be able to self-generate love. So we're gonna just drop all this uh, down the grounding cord. And <clears throat> we're gonna go back to bringing that pure source energy down through the central core, down through the heart, solar plexus, second chakra, spilling down the root, excellent. And then let's bring this energy up the front, real close to the spine. Uh, one, two, three. So it's stopping right at the solar plexus. So let's go out to the third layer and so third layer, third chakra is just like a big stop sign. So we're gonna pull in that energy that makes us feel afraid to step even towards love because maybe love feels painful. Love is scary. And so these are all the kinds of energies that we're gonna be working on clearing over 27 days, one on top of the other. <laughs> okay, great. So we're just gonna drop that helpless energy down the grounding. And then we're also going to go and uh, we're going to bring up this energy up through the central core, up through the solar plexus, into the heart where it's stopping again. So we're coming up the front. Let's go out to that third layer. So that's the energy of trying to prove our worth and our value, the hamster wheel. Three, two. And there's also a lot of anger in there. So let's drop that down our grounding. So this may be one of the ways that you've been trying to motivate yourself is with anger. You know, if you crack the whip hard enough, uh, then you'll maybe do that thing that you're supposed to do. <laughs> so that's more of that old programming. So let's bring this up through the heart and the throat, six crown. So right at the crown, let's go out to that third layer so you can give yourself permission. Hey Michael, nice to see you here. <laughs> From Australia, great. And so we're gonna bring that energy up through the crown and then through all of the rings and then down through all the layers of the aura. And let's pay special attention to that third layer where uh, love 
feels like an effort. It feels like hard work, right? And it shouldn't feel like that. <laughs> Coulda, woulda, shoulda. <laughs> So we're just letting all of this effort around love. We're just gonna let it go down that grounding. Three. And then we're gonna jump out to the 15th layer where the 1% hang out, right? Well, we're gonna start at the bottom. So we clear this layer as it goes all the way up. So a, a lot of their energy right around the solar plexus in this 15th layer. Just gonna keep lifting that up all the way up through the central core above your head. So we send that off planet. And then we're gonna go all the way out to the 30th layer, which is where the reptilian energies hang out. So we're gonna let that go. Okay, great. Okay, the rest of the aura looks clear. And so now we're gonna bring the energies from the upper four chakras, the heart, throat, six crown, and then all of your rings. Even if you don't know how many you have, we're gonna bring all of those energies out the right arm because receiving starts with giving first, giving from the heart. So we're gonna bring all those energies out that right arm and it stops right about here. <laughs> so you probably have stopped giving in your relationship space and um, so let's get that activated. So bring that out the right arm and then you're gonna put your fingertips together like this <clears throat> so that the energy can pass through the palms and through all the fingertips. So you're gonna bring that energy into the left hand, which is blocked right at the left hand. So you want to, we're just gently gonna pull this energy up the left receiving hand so you can start receiving all the love and support and, um, healing, you heal each other in relationships. So bringing that up to the shoulder and then down through the front and back of the heart and it creates a circle, it's a circle of reciprocity. And then it simultaneously passes through the throat so you can ask for what you need in your relationship space. And then through that six chakra, clearing any limiting or lack mindsets, through the crown, you can give yourself permission to actually have a relationship that's mutually satisfying and rewarding and loving. And then through all of those creative rings. Awesome. <laughs> okay, great. And <clears throat> if there's something you want me to look at specifically, um, regarding love, let me know, but I'm just gonna keep going here and seeing what else is in the way of you receiving the love relationship that you would like in your life. So there's more energy showing up at the heart, out to that fifth layer. So this is where communication, fifth layer relates to the fifth chakra. So there's communication that um, is blocked in the heart where maybe it's hard for you to tell someone how much you love them or and maybe to um, express how you really feel and it, it like it, it gets stuck in your throat so we're just going to pull this energy in at the heart so that you can express how you feel without expectation if we're telling someone i love you in hopes that you can hear it back, then that's an expectation. But if you can just tell someone how much you care and admire and appreciate and love them just because that's how you really feel, then this clearing this in energy in the heart will help with that. And it'll come back when it's time. <laughs> okay. Six, five. good let's see how open the heart is right now the heart chakra is only open 
50%. So let's open the heart all the way. Let's find out why it's protecting. It's protecting you by closing it. So there's two ways that we kind of protect our heart. One is we close the heart and then nothing can get in or out. And the second is we have all these barriers to love. So right now, let's see why um, the, okay, I'll look at this in just a second, Peter. Um, why the, the heart is only open 50%. So the energy is not in the heart. The energy is in your root chakra. All the way out to the 15th layer. So here again, the 1%, this is where they hang out, is interfering with our ability to open our hearts. So this is an energy that we will see showing up a lot throughout these 27 days of this, um, the, the love challenge we're going to be doing. So here in the root... So we're not going to send this down the grounding cord. We're going to send it up through the central core. Spirit is directing that these 1% energies need to go off planet now. So we're going to pull this 1% energy all the way in. It's pulled into the fourth layer right now where the heart doesn't feel safe. It just doesn't feel safe to open our hearts, to express love, to be vulnerable, it just doesn't feel safe. So let's pull this energy in that says it's not safe to do that. And we're just gonna pull all of that energy into the core. And we're gonna pull it up through the central core, sending it off planet. So let's measure the heart now. See if the heart is starting to open, if it's starting to thaw out a little bit. Okay, so now it's at 95%. Let's see where the rest of that heart opening wants to open up. Again, it's not at the heart. It's right here in our sixth chakra. So these are beliefs, beliefs. So the energy that's causing this is out to the third layer. So there's an energy here that says that you're not powerful enough to keep your heart open and not get bludgeoned, <laughs> you know, not get murdered or just, you know, a lot of pain coming at you. So we are um, going to pull in this belief that says you're powerless over your heart. And we're going to drop that down the grounding cord, that belief. So this, you know, what we're doing here is we're not just relaxing in some meditation. We're literally clearing the energies that are blocking love. Your own personal self-love and the ability to magnetize a loving relationship in your life. So we're clearing that um, fear of opening your heart out of the sixth chakra. Okay, let's see where it is now. Um, okay, so now it's open 100%. So now we're going to do one other thing. Um, we're going to go... Uh, so I want you just to take note of where you are right now. So when I say you, that's that part of you that's conscious and knows um, there's a consciousness this, this energy may be above your head, it may be behind you, it may be to the side of you, it might be right in the middle of your head, um, and maybe you're in your heart now, but that's where we're headed. So I just want to see where you're at. So uh, most of you are still right up here in your sixth chakra, try, maybe trying to make sense of what I'm saying. But I want you to tap into an energy right now of this awareness of where you are right here, and I want you to start bringing this awareness. We're going to start coming down into the heart. But I want you to move really slowly. And we're going to notice where it stops. So it's it's stopping right about at the mouth. Like right about here. It's like, ah, that's about it. Okay. So I want you just to notice and feel what's starting to get activated or triggered for you to occupy your heart. 
Like, are you, the first time I did this, I started crying. I just got sad. And because there was just so much pain in my heart. <clears throat> so I just want you to notice what's showing up as we continue to just gently move down to your heart. Yeah, there's a powerlessness feeling in your heart that's not allowing that to come, for, allowing you to come all the way down into your heart. So I want you to just drop all those energies that are getting activated in the heart. Just drop it down the grounding. And so these energies are not you. These are energies that don't belong to you. Programs, other people's energies and beliefs and judgments. So just pull all that in, drop it down as we continue to bring your awareness from your sixth chakra. We're coming down, we're about to the chin now. So just keep breathing and releasing all of this energy in the heart. Excellent. Just keep breathing and releasing. There you go. You're just slowly coming down. Now, just notice what you're feeling. Now, we have people all the way in Australia who are doing this along with us. And um, it'd be great to hear, Michael, if you're noticing any of this. Okay, there we go. So we're about to the top of that heart chakra. Just keep pulling it down. The heart's still 100% open. Good. Hey, Gwen, thanks for showing up. Okay. <laughs> Great. There we go. So now, now you're in your heart. So just feel that for a moment. Just feel that energy. You know, is it sad? Is it angry? Do you hear a voice that's judging you? You don't deserve this. You're a horrible person. What, you know, just notice what you're noticing. And so while you're noticing that, I'm going to check on these um, two people that have uh, a question or something they want me to look at. So let's see what we have. You're learning. Yes, great, Michael. <laughs> um, Peter. So he's in an 18-month relationship but continues detoxing, working with moss. Yes. About to break up again. <laughs> Is there something in me that I am not aware of blocking this. Um, good, so yes, and I'm glad you're here from Moss because you know I love Moss's work, but um, it's very hard to get his individual personal attention and um, without paying you know $500 for 15 minutes <laughs> or 10 minutes in a group. Um, so, Yes, Moss's people need personal help because it, it stirs up a lot. It's a really powerful work, and yet they, um, they don't know how to handle or deal with all of this. So let me look at you specifically, Peter, and see what's going on. So in your root chakra, there, out to the second layer, there's a lot of anger and rage in your root. And so this is like the opposite of love, right? And it doesn't allow you to feel grounded. It doesn't allow you to feel safe. And um, so just drop that down your grounding, all that anger. Good. So now your anger is at zero. And then the other thing I want to check is um, where you're courting, if you're courting to each other. So she's corded to your heart, which is where she's trying to pull those guilt strings, trying to make you feel bad. And um, so uh, let's pull her out of there so that you stop feeling motivated by guilt. Nobody wants to be motivated by feeling guilty about anything. So we're just going to pull that out. And then when you feel guilty and judged, that doesn't inspire love, right? Just pull her out of there. <laughs> and then let's see if you're courting to her. You're not, so good job, congratulations. Um, the one other thing I would look at is um, how many past lives you've had together. Three, 
30. So that's a lot. So you guys have spent a lot of time together, but more importantly is if you have any unresolved lifetimes. So um, that, how many unresolved? You have three. You have three unresolved lifetimes. So um, if you want to write these down, I'll give you a shot at clearing them yourself. And if you don't have a pen or anything handy, um, you can go back and listen to this. So I'll just tell you where these three unresolved lifetimes are. All you have to do is take this energy, pull it into the core, and then just send it down your grounding cord. So this is how simple these things can be. None of this stuff has to be hard. That's the good news. So uh, the first unresolved lifetime is in your root chakra out to the third layer. So you'll just pull that energy in and um, that should clear that. The second one is in your heart out to the third layer. So proving a lot of proving your worth and value. And second chakra out to that third layer. There was uh, some sexual energy in this relationship that um, caused you to feel powerless. So maybe impotent would be the word for that in that lifetime. Uh, seven, six, five, three. Okay, and then the third lifetime solar plexus all the way out to the 15th layer so an energy that felt a lot like the one percent that didn't allow you to um you know it's kind of like that slavery energy and then um yeah so clear those and uh, report back <laughs> next time we're live maybe on tuesday when we entertain some questions uh, let's see what Gwen has to say. Uh, it says, lots of confusion, turbulence, and not knowing when. It's time to uh, let go of a relationship, both loving or if these this is something deeper to release. Okay, well, let's, let's take a look, um, Gwen, and see what's going on with you. So, yeah, usually, you know, we um, often, so, so relationships are the opportunity to look in the mirror. This is the biggest part of what relationships are about. And so if we can uh, come to an understanding that where you both understand that and you're both supporting each other in this mirror exercise of looking in the mirror, getting triggered at our own stuff, but it's hard to look at our stuff, so we blame the other person for triggering us, and it's all their fault for making us wrong. So um, let's see what's getting triggered in you, Gwen. So this is like what's in the mirror that you're having a hard time seeing, but we want to blame the other person. So in your case... Um, Let's see if there's any courting going on. There's no courting. And uh, so let's see about unresolved uh, lifetimes. So first, how many lifetimes have you spent together? So um, 25 lifetimes, which is also a significant amount. So unresolved is um, only two so overall it probably feels like there's lots of good things you guys get along great and, but there's things that just and here in these two unresolved lifetimes you'll see the same energies showing up currently so the first unresolved lifetime is in the heart second layer And this um, is effect, was affecting your uh, energy to create, your creative energy, being able to create from the heart. So notice if that's still showing up again in this relationship. And then also in the same lifetime in the second chakra, second layer, 
creativity. So potentially, um, maybe you couldn't create a baby together and that created a lot of, um, a lot of trouble in your relationship. Or maybe you guys were in business together and you couldn't create shit <laughs> together. And so I don't know, what, whatever it is that you wanted to create together just wasn't happening. So that may be showing up still in this lifetime. Second lifetime to, to clear is also in the heart, out to the 15th layer. So that's that 1% energy, that slavery kind of energy that doesn't allow you to, to open your heart, to be in that heart energy. And then the, uh, let's see if there's any other places in that lifetime. Also in the root chakra, out to the fourth layer where it didn't feel safe to step into love. So clear those energies. Um, you can clear those on your own. Just do your best and report back on Tuesday. We'll be showing up to entertain more questions and um, see maybe if you were successful. <laughs> it's not that hard. Okay, great. Um, let's see, Michael. Your partner and you love each other deeply, unconditionally, for two and a half years. But recently, the pace of our spiritual growth has been misaligned. I'm a few years ahead and giving her time to heal wounds from her past. Yes. Good. So, yeah, sometimes you just need to take a break and, um, and create space. You need room in a relationship where there's room to breathe. Some people have separate bedrooms, and this is how they allow their relationship to breathe so that they, it creates uh, that longing so that they really want to be together, and then they come together. And some people um, spend time away, you know, part of the week, and then come back together. Some just um, need to go take a walk or something, but... However, you need to create space to heal and, and create that allowance for healing. It's really vital in a relationship to do that. And, you know, we heal and we grow at different rates and different paces. And um, it's, you know, we don't want to make our partner wrong for um, not growing as fast as we are. Um, but, you know, at some point, sometimes we just, we go grow too fast, you know, and, um, sometimes, and, and you know, it's always, a uh, everyone has to decide for themselves when they're supporting someone and when they're just carrying an anchor. So everyone has to decide that for themselves, but let's see what you have going on, Michael. And, um, let's see if you're courting to each other. So you're not courted to her, but she's courted to your heart. And so this is where maybe she doesn't know that she is looking in the mirror when you guys are working together and that there's stuff for her to heal. And so let's take this cord out of your heart because that's going to make you feel guilty for whatever, maybe for taking time to just um, stay in high vibration. You know, is that it is, it's not helpful in a relationship to allow someone else's growth and, and their, what they're going through to pull us down. That's, that's like not, that's not loving on their part. They need to give us room to, you know, them go heal. And then we can stay in that high vibration so we can receive them when they come back. So uh, taking her out of your heart. Okay, good. So that's important. So let's see how many unresolved lifetimes uh, you have. Um, so first, how many lifetimes you have together? 10 and unresolved, um, two. So here they are, if you want to write them down. Uh, first one is in the sixth chakra. All the way out to the 25th layer. So that's fear, fear and the beliefs around fear. Um, maybe fear that you're going to leave me, kind of those kind of fears. Fears you're going to leave me. Fears that you're 
um, going to find me unattractive someday or fears that you're going to stop loving me or fear that you're going to go away or any of those kinds of fears. And um, four, seven, six, okay, so that's it for that lifetime. And then the second lifetime in the heart, out to that third layer, that's that proving your worth and value. And then also in the root chakra, out to that third layer, where it didn't feel safe to step into love. So clear those and report back <laughs> on, on Tuesday. So um, this is about all we have time for today. So I hope that you've all enjoyed this. Um, this all resonates very well with me. This is Michael talking. I'm interested in past life unresolved issues, some of which I'm already guessing and working on fear of rejection. Okay, good. Yes, so that's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks, Tammy. So good to have you here. So um, wrapping up today, so if you are interested in joining us for the love ad Infinite Love Adventure Challenge, <laughs> then um, you can sign up now. There's a link in the Facebook um, in the bio, and uh, we can also post it. And also, um, there's a couple bonuses there that come with the program that you can start working on like immediately that will help you start to release fear and anger, which are the opposite of a loving relationship, right? So these are um, both really helpful and available immediately, even though we're starting on the 11th. So I have a project that I'm going to be working on uh, that um, between now and the 11th. So today was our last day of the program we're in now. And we're looking forward uh, to this new uh, series. And it's all by divine arrangement. So take a look at that. If it's something that interests you, we're going to be doing this kind of work every day, except Sundays, every day for 27 days. And uh, we're just going to keep building and building and building. So we'll be doing it for 22 minutes a day uh, and so that you can manifest something different on Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, good. Well, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. And go off and enjoy this beautiful weekend, TGIF. And keep asking my favorite question, how? <laughs> how does it get any better than this? And then stay in that blissful question of, I wonder. Sending much love. Namaste.